Hi, I'm Ed from Cyvex, and this week on Cyvex Says, we're talking about normally aspirated and turbocharged engines. So when it comes to tuning a turbocharged or a normally aspirated engine, we're trying to establish one thing, and that's how much load the engine is under at any given point in time in order to calculate the amount of fuel we require. There are three ways we have available to us to measure engine load um, in the form of sensors that allows us to communicate the environment to our ECU. One of them is throttle position. That's pretty obvious. The further you press your accelerator, the more the throttles open and the more air that enters the engine. Um, another way of measuring this is with a mass airflow meter. So this is a fairly kind of chunky airflow meter. Every part of, uh, it goes in um, normally the airbox of your car and air that enters the engine is measured and the signal that is sent out to the ECU is the actual mass of the air. There are some great advantages to this. And a third way of measuring engine load is manifold pressure. Obviously that relates to throttle position and so on. You can't use all three methods or rather that you need to choose the right one for the right application. For example, um, on a turbocharged car, throttle position doesn't directly relate to engine load. So if you are uh, at low RPM where the turbo hasn't got enough exhaust energy to work yet and you go full throttle, that won't be a linear relationship as the RPM increases and airflow starts increasing um, versus kind of uh, airflow and engine load because you've got a variable of a turbo which a throttle position sensor can't see that. Um, a nice way of doing it, which is what most manufacturers do, um, slightly more complex and there are reasons why aftermarket often don't, is a mass airflow meter. Because it measures the absolute amount of air entering the engine, uh, it's not required to have a manifold pressure sensor. I'll come on to those in a second. Um, and instead you have under any given operating condition, RPM, throttle position, an absolute known amount of air entering the engine. So this means it's easy to compute the amount of fuel required at that given moment in time. Um, now the common way that we, uh, myself included, and many other aftermarket engine tuners um, use to calculate and measure engine pressure is a manifold pressure sensor. So we can take a, a otherwise known as a MAP sensor. So this measures the manifold pressure, which along with the engine RPM, you can calculate the amount of air entering an engine. There are other compensating factors we need to apply for this. We need to know the air density. The air density can be um, trimmed and modified by means of an air temperature sensor. This allows you to create, oh, with the ECU, whichever one you're using, hopefully one of ours, it allows you to create a, a known given load operating kind of condition for any given engine RPM and throttle position and manifold pressure to then accurately generate your fuel and ignition tables. A normally aspirated car, you don't have uh, a turbo. There's not this strange kind of dynamic of extreme changes in engine load. Um, and instead we can just be really simple. Uh, we can use a throttle position and then on top of that, uh, obviously throttle position, know your engine RPM, and from that you calculate load. And then as an environmental correction factors, we can use air temperature sensor. That, that's pretty straightforward. These work really nice. They're very fast and crisp. So if you've ever driven a normally aspirated car on throttle bodies, that will almost certainly be based on throttle position. And as soon as you open the throttle, it, you know, it, everything's there straight away. It's really nice, very responsive. Uh, drive really well if they're set up properly. Now looking at turbo vehicles, we all have um, our manifold pressure sensor. Sometimes these are built into the ECU. Um, other times they're <clears throat> bolted onto the inlet manifold and other times they're separate and they're just connected via a pipe or a vacuum pipe that goes between the inlet manifold, then the MAP sensor and to the ECU. The difference between a normally aspirated and a, and a turbo car uh, with a MAP sensor versus throttle position sensor is the MAP sensors are slightly slower to respond. So your engine's sitting there idle. You open the accelerator suddenly, 100% if you like, 
there's a, it takes a moment for obviously the air pressures to equalize within the system. Um, and then it also takes a moment for the map sensor to register that. And that can depend on how long the pipe is between the map sensor and the manifold. This is why lots of OEM manufacturers will mount their map sensors straight on the inlet manifold. It gives the best response. I've seen problems where people have come to me in the past and said, hey, my car doesn't drive very well. Steady state, I can drive along, it's fine. If I open the accelerator quickly, it's horrible. And that has been because the map sensor has been too far away from the manifold. So it's a design consideration that's worth thinking about. We can talk about MAF sensors on turbos as well. These work on normally aspirated cars. Basically, they're really great because they measure the absolute amount of air coming through as air as mass. Um, they don't require air temperature compensation and they also have the added benefit is they automatically compensate for altitude. It's not too much of a problem in the UK. But if you drive a car that's on a map sensor or even throttle position sensor and you go from the sea level in Scotland to the highlands, you're going to have problems with air fuel ratio changing if you don't have any correction for ambient air pressure, atmospheric air pressure if you like. So air mass sensors, because they measure the air mass, they don't have this problem and they auto compensate for ambience um, and atmospherics and, and so on. They do have a disadvantage though, they don't like turbulence. So if you put a MAF sensor near a turbo, it can cause problems. The, the kind of vortex of air entering a turbo can interfere with the MAF sensor itself. Uh, usually it light loads, so you've just come off boost, um, you close the throttle, the turbo is still spinning, there's air moving all over the place inside the pipes and the MAF sensor can interpret that incorrectly. Um, also, they're a restriction. They go in line with your air pipe work, and as a result of that, they can cause a slight restriction as well. So there are design considerations that you need to uh, consider if you're using a MAF sensor. Manufacturers generally prefer using them because they're more accurate um, and sort of give you more precise fuel control, if you like, than just a MAP and an air temperature sensor. To summarize then, we've covered quite a bit of ground here. Uh, MAF sensors work great on normally aspirated or turbo cars. Um, you have to consider design considerations to make sure they're in smooth airflow. Throttle position sensor only uh, for load, obviously with air temperature compensation, is great for normally aspirated. You can't use that configuration without a MAP sensor for manifold pressure compensation for a turbo. And then the really popular option, which pretty much we see everywhere, is a manifold pressure sensor along with air temperature sensor, uh, which work for um, the vast majority of turbocharged cars. There are various other things that will play onto this for ex on, on all three aspects. We'll use um, uh, Lambda feedback for closed loop fueling control and there's various other things going on. But as a quick, simple, hopefully understandable overview, uh, that's the kind of difference between engine load sensors and turbo and normally aspirated engines and the approach to kind of uh, tuning them and getting the correct data you need in order to set up your issues properly. If you enjoyed this video, um, click like. If you have any questions, you can ask them down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, look out for our next videos.